I'm Jackie Riffis. I'm the founder of Prairie Godmothers. It's a company located in the Chicagoland area that's dedicated to providing products and services for people who want to reconnect with nature. And today we're here on the south side of Chicago to demonstrate to you how to uh, build and plant a rain garden. A rain garden is something that will help these folks here with stormwater runoff. It's designed to be not only aesthetically pleasing, but to serve a, a higher purpose, if you will, in that it holds rainwater and lets it dissipate back into our water table without picking up herbicides, pesticides, and street oils. So when we want to put a rain garden in, it serves dual purposes. Uh, one is to really help with an overflow of water during heavy rains. And the second is, of course, why would you plant a garden unless it was really pleasing? So in this garden, we'll use native plants that are often uncommon, but uh, really great for this sort of garden and the environment as well. I'll walk you through that and then share with you how we got this garden started, and you'll see all of our steps from beginning to end. I have a couple plants that are my favorites that we put in rain gardens that I'll share with you today. Uh, the first one is this guy right here. We call it a hyssop, or the botanical name is Agastache. I love this plant because it likes wet feet. It's a great attractor for bees and butterflies. It's something that blooms this time of year, and we're in August, and we will leave it standing all year, even through the winter. It'll have a wonderful winter look. It will provide a haven for migrating birds because they'll start nibbling at the seed heads as they dry. And the best part of it to me is when you get close to it, it smells like licorice. And what's not to love about that? So this guy loves wet feet, and we'll see a stand of agastache in this garden. I also brought along something that every garden needs, which is a swamp milkweed. With the concern about monarch butterflies uh, sweeping the nation and that their numbers are diminishing, it's important to have uh, a host plant for monarch butterflies. And the swamp milkweed is one of the only milkweeds where the, the uh, monarch will uh, lay its eggs. And so it's important in every garden, whether it's a rain garden or not, to have some milkweed. This happens to be swamp milkweed, and it will be very happy here, and the butterflies will be happy as well. And then finally, I brought along uh, a marsh marigold. We think of marigolds as annuals, that they just grow every season and then, and then die off when September comes. But this is a native plant that is in the marigold family, but it's uh, a perennial, a native perennial. It will come back every year. It's low growing, and when it blooms, it has a beautiful uh, yellow gold flower on it. Loves to be wet, so you'll find this front and center in our street bed. There are rain garden calculators you can find that will help you determine the size of your rain garden and most times it's over-engineered so that a uh, backyard would be completely filled with a rain garden. We take issue with that in that anytime we can plant a garden that serves as a basin to hold rainwater, uh, regardless of the size, it can be 10 square feet, it could be 100 square feet, that's what we're going to do. So we took the approach with this garden to create an area close to the downspout of the backyard of the house. So in total, it's about 100 square feet, but it's created by uh, sizing out an area so that we have a basin in the backyard that will hold the water uh, after a rainfall. And so done this week in preparation is to create the area, dig it out so at the steepest point it's 12 inches below the, the level of the grass, and we selected plants that will thrive in water or in moist areas and that will be planted.
lived on the east side here for 34 years. In this, our first house, our only house. And uh, we went looking for a bungalow and we went looking for how we did. Everyone was 100% on board and were there all the time explaining everything to us. Um, I got to watch, luckily, the whole process of it being done. They had Vince and Brandon helping her and they did a very quick job. It wasn't long, so it showed me that someone really could accomplish this on their own. And just with a little bit of maybe online research or some uh, help, they could really figure this out. And it was nice to watch. We filled it with water, how that would deter the water away from our house and have a nice place for all this water to go. When there's a heavy rain, I don't have to worry where this rain is going because sometimes it will fill up in my basement stairwell and run under the basement. So I think this will solve that problem. And now today they're gonna to do the final planting and I just can't wait with all the natural plants and to see how wonderful it's going to look. And what the homeowner will notice is after a rainfall, uh, the water will stay in the basin for 24 hours or less. This is relatively sandy soil, and so it falls to the, the surface uh, actually faster than that. And uh, the plants will thrive. And in essence, we've prevented water from filling up the backyard and all the other areas that tend to get really wet after a rainfall.